Hey, welcome to Blue Jay Banner Post Game Show. We are live at Let It Fly. It's a Saturday night. Of course, this place is rocking like it always is. Uh, welcome to the show. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a ton and the like button. We've been getting great follows lately, so make sure you keep that trend going. Uh, my buddy Jerry Lampy is joining me tonight. Jerry? Thanks for, Jerry thanks for the late invite, are Tim. are toasting yeah. to, the, uh, to the pink out with the pink Let It Fly cans that you can get right here at Let It Fly. How cool is that? That's right. Aren't they cool cans? Aren't they Look cool? good. Very cool. Very cool. Everybody in the room says very cool. Yeah. And the beer tastes good, too. And we're toasting another Jays win. Huge win tonight. Uh, a little struggle in the first half, but uh, hey, got it done. We'll talk about the game here in a second. We're going to have Josiah Dotzler on tonight. Got a little run tonight, so we're going to talk to him. And then uh, before he gets here, because the players have the uh, pink out duties where they, you know, auction the shirt, the shooting shirts off, and they sign them, talk to the people who bought them, take pictures, and so on and so forth. They might be a little late, but Coach uh, Steve Murphy will be over here in a little bit. Uh, Jerry, the Jays won tonight, but outscored DePaul 45-25 in the second half. Yeah, obviously a better second half. I thought DePaul played actually pretty good for DePaul in the first half. One turnover. Like I said, I've never seen DePaul play 20 minutes of basketball with just one turnover. Crazy. So, you know, Creighton played okay, I thought, in the first half. I th you, you kept waiting for Creighton to make that run when DePaul goes on their five-minute stupid basketball, takes some bad shots. We kind of got that at the start of the second half. So we got some separation there to make it a more comfortable win. I think everybody came in the game thinking, you know, this is going to be a 20-point halftime lead. But give credit to DePaul. I think they came out and had a good game plan in the first half. Played very disciplined. Only jacked up five threes, hit one of them. But they were really, you know, disciplined on taking good shots. I think they shot it about 43% in the first half. So they kept it, kept themselves in the game. And it took a Creighton surge there in the start of the second half to kind of get the separation we were right. expecting to make it an easy win. Yeah, they, so. they, uh, they – shot actually they were around 50 percent for most of that first half they missed some shots right at the end which right. helped us get that three-point lead yeah but they were like you said they're one of five from three and i want to ask murph about this and i got he, knowing murph i know what he's already gonna say no no that's not what we did to him but it, i just sat there at halftime me and my buddy were like mm. man they're shooting one of five from three they're driving an ass every time let's back off them let's make let's let them shoot the three and we did that, and they had six points in the first eight minutes of that second half. I mean, yeah, I think because because they can't, they're not a good shooting no. team. They're 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 three and sixteen for a reason. Right. I mean, they're not a good three point shooting team. I think you won to force DePaul to take threes. Granted, you don't want them to be wide open, but I think in the second half, Creighton actually went down and helped a little bit. I know Trey went in there and stole one, um, but you know. A lot of teams don't like to go help down low because you need to open up shots for three-pointer. But, you know, DePaul's, I would almost rather have DePaul jacking up threes. I think they're not a great shooting po uh, team from three. So if you had them jacking up a lot of threes, I think you like your right. chances better. And they, they shot, they did shoot 25% in the second half, 20% in the first half, but they shot three more threes. So mm -hmm. there again. But we, we did kind of keep them, I mean, they were getting right to the rack in the yes, first half. Second they were. half. We held them out in that 15-foot range. Mm -hmm. they, they started taking some wild shots. We played a little better defense to, to go deep in the shot clock, and, and that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we commented on, Stephen Ashworth, okay? Mm -hmm. He made a three, then he missed a couple. And you can, like, when he shoots a free throw, I, I like he's one of the few guys in the world you'll ever see. That rotation on that ball is perfect. 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 Every time. He shoots these threes where you can see the rotation is like off. It almost looks like a knuckleball. Da, 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 and he misses those every time. He then made four in a row where the rotation was just mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. And I don't know what he, if he's just got to settle down a little bit, if he's got to get a little bit more open look. Mm -hmm. But when he does that, he's deadly out there. And it just helps everybody help Trey out it helped Baylor out it helped mm -hmm. Calk out yeah when he gets set up and gets and catches a pass coming from inside out I think he shoots a lot better he you know every shooter 
I always like getting the pass from coming in because that's the way you shoot in practice, right? So yep. you want that pass coming in to kick it out so you're already squared up. You don't have to catch the ball from the side and get squared up. So I think he's a better shooter when he's set and he gets a pass coming from inside. A guy drives in and kicks it out to him, and he's already squared up looking at yep. it. But Absolutely. he's an excellent free throw shooter. He's the one you got the line. He, you're almost disappointed when he hits the rim on a free throw. So <laughs> you know that's the guy just – I'm sure he's shot probably over 100,000 free throws in his life in the gym. So – that's well, safe from the guy you want. My the wife free throw is line. like, well, wait, what happened there? What happened? I go, they got a check goal. That's two points for us. She goes, they automatically give us two points? I go, well, kind of. Right. <laughs> what did he say? I don't know what he said. It to was get somebody on the bench. Oh, it someone on the bench. Yep, something. Because okay. he pointed at somebody directly, yeah. one of the assistant coaches. Okay. I think it had been riding him a lot. Right. And uh, because one of the assistant coaches was out there the time off before in his grill. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened. But that's the cool thing about the team this year. When you get a technical against Creighton, it's two points. Right. I mean, you're not you're not going to be like, well, maybe he'll no, no. Ashworth's right. going to make those. I and think he's uh, around ninety five percent. Tonight, Ashworth, uh, numbers like we haven't seen here at Creighton. We saw him last year at Utah mm -hmm. State, five and nine for three, uh, seventeen points. Uh, tonight he had some turnovers though. Didn't have mm -hmm. as many assists, but I'll tell you what, the assists he made were beautiful, and he mm -hmm. should have had. Probably two more. <laughs> the yeah. ball was fumbled. But that one he drew, threw in there to Kalk was just a thing of beauty. Yeah. The one where Baylor threw a great pass to him, then he threw a great pass to Kalk. Yeah. Those two were things of beauty. And coming in this game, I think he was like 33-6 and six on assisted turnover. Yeah. So he it's really – He's still going to be like four to one at for the next seven games, right. after, even after tonight. He's definitely playing better, and I thought the key was last game. What I loved was he was making that Xavier player so uncomfortable and so frustrated. And I remember after he, after he shot it, he pushed off Ashworth down and got a flagrant foul. Yeah, that's when you know you're getting your opponent's head. When yeah. he gets so frustrated, he pushes you to the ground because he's so upset because you're in his grill and you're bothering him. So yeah, and and what Stephen was having in the in early in the season was on that pick and roll. He was getting behind the player. He was never getting in position ever after that. Like right. it was over. Like mm -hmm. he he was just a non-factor. Now, yes, on that pick and roll, you're going to get behind the guy sometimes because you're fighting over the screen. But he's hustling his tail to get in front of that guy. Yeah. And if he's not, he's harassing him from behind. Mm -hmm. It's making a huge difference All on right. the defensive end. He's definitely playing better. You can tell he's getting more comfortable playing with the guys. Again, it's a big transition going from one team to another. You're the point guard. You're supposed to be the leader. But, you know, it's hard to just step in and take in from day one and be that leader. So I think he's feeling more comfortable playing with his teammates. And you can see it on the floor. Hey, what about Kalk? Eight of nine from the line tonight. Yeah, money, What's man. up with that? Yeah, that's nice to see because he's going to get fouled. I mean, I thought Creighton made a big effort to get him the ball early in the, early in the game. And obviously, when he goes up, he's going to draw contact, and he's going to go to the free throw line a lot. I mean, big guys are going to go to the free throw line a lot. And so him making eight of nine was big because other teams will look at that and say, yeah, maybe we, you just don't hack him when he goes up and do the hack right. a shack. So him making free throws is going to be key. And, and we didn't get that foul advantage tonight, but we did go 11 to 12 from the free throw line. We so did. That was, that was pretty nice. Darn good. Um, I, I wish you'd just knock a couple of those threes down. You would force <sighs> that defense out, and then we'd have those drives. No, uh, they weren't. You know, they weren't really even close tonight. I didn't think. I think yeah. one of them just caught the side of the backboard. So, yeah, that would be nice if he can make them. But when he doesn't make them and they don't hit the rim, that's like, why are we doing that? He so. has a tremendous beautiful stroke. It looks good. Yeah, yeah it looks it good does. when it goes leaves his hand, it but sometimes, you know, and that's confidence a lot, you know, so. Yeah. Trey with uh, 23 tonight, matched his number, 10 of 20, 2 of 8 from 3, but uh, really had 7 assists. Yeah, that was big. Tonight. Yeah, I thought that was big. He seeing the court better as a point guard when he drives it in and they're collapsing on him, it's important for him to kick out and hit Ashworth or hit Baylor for a three or even drop it into Kalk for the easy bucket. So Trey, I thought, saw the court better tonight and got the ball to his teammates for some easy looks. So yeah, Sure did. Uh, hey, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure and hit that uh, chat button and chat with us and let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, I think DePaul's playing better. But the, to me, their problem is uh, Mac Etienne, mm -hmm. their center. He's bad. 
Yeah, they just they really struggle down low. I mean, I don't know why they don't go more with Churchill at center. I mean, he he at least I thought was causing Calk some problems. Mm -hmm. And they got in some foul trouble not, too, ETN right? was not. I mean, he was just getting abused down there. Right. Yeah, in bad position. You know, getting when you get backed up and you're standing right underneath the bucket, that's not a good position for a center. And I think that happened the deal all. is ETN a better shooter. You could tell. Mm -hmm. He hit some of those 15 shots. And Churchill can't shoot at all. So right. they're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. I did think DePaul, though, though for the most part, and, you know, he's playing. You know, he played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys. And it wasn't like he emptied the bench at the end. No. He's playing a lot more guys. I think he's trying to find a rotation he likes. More. Yeah. And so that's good for him, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I thought they played hard for the guy. They did. I, they seem like they're more of a team than they were early on. Mm -hmm. um, they don't get down when they get down a little bit. And the last two games, hey, you know, I don't know if you want to, uh, you know, talk about success this way. They've covered the point spread in the last yeah. two games. So they've, they've, they've been competitive. They were competitive now for three halves. The fourth, the second half tonight, they weren't competitive. But right. Up until then, they've been competitive against the two two of the three best teams in the Yeah, they, the play, play, they kept it close with Marquette. They just got to get rid of that five or six minutes of basketball where they just don't play good. They rush shots. They turn it over. That seems to kill them. Other team goes on a 12-0 run, and they're just not good enough to recover from and, that. And so. they don't they don't just, like we mentioned, they just don't have the outside shooting that no. you're going to need to compete in this league because people are going to pack you down and right. force you to shoot that three. And they're not – like in the second half, it did appear to me that we were like, eh, we're okay with them taking that three. Right. When they yeah. get rushed and they took quick threes, that's not yeah. – that's when DePaul – other team goes on big runs against DePaul, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're on YouTube, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to go to a break right now and, and talk a little bit about uh, CareMinders Home Healthcare. Uh, they are title sponsor of our show. Uh, they have done so much for us. We really appreciate them. When you're in need of care for your injured, ill, or senior loved one, reach out to CareMinders Home Care. Their agency is comprised of, of certified caregivers who have many years of experience, you'll receive versatile, flexible, and customized care, and it will so ease your mind and give you peace of mind and well-being. So give a call today, 402-532-1383, or go to careminders.com, and it's time, as I said, for Coach's Corner. Hi, Tim. My <laughs> guy, Steve Murphell. How are you? You're not going to be mean to me as you are the first two times you did Just the first time. The second time I wasn't mean. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. By the way, I just... Uh, I'll let, I'll let it go, but by the way, I went and looked at your, your thing, and I was actually right, but we'll let that go. Anyway. You want to talk about the Vikings or the Packers or uh, what, what? You know what? They both didn't win the Yeah, you're right. <laughs> because that's right. what the Packers usually tell us when we win the division. You know, hey, you're not going to win anything. See you, you know next. what? We'll I, I, pretty much, Murph, I pretty much resigned myself that we're not. I'm never going to see a Super Bowl <laughs> victory in my life. Ah, see, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm a Packer fan. Though, yeah, right, yeah, you know. but you, you've won. So, so yeah, I mean, we'll, and we will win again. But, yeah, <laughs> but see, here's the deal. We've gone, like, from number one in the division to number four. In yes, you have. like, six weeks. In a like, short period yeah. of time. <laughs> like, it's pretty scary. Better sign your quarterback back. <laughs> well, you know what? If we do that, then what else do we do? Then we don't have any other players. So, that's, yeah, we're, we're in seller cap hell right now. But enough football talk. Uh, congrats on the win. Yeah. Sole uh, second right now. So we, we, we've worked our way up from like fifth to second in a matter of a week and a half. So tremendous month impressive. of January, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, just, uh, you know, rough start. Obviously, you know, we, the Villanova thing, hopefully he's not going to come back to get us, but I think we've kind of overcome that and yeah. have bounced back really well. Uh, I'll tell you what, we need a break. And we got, and got it. Mm -hmm. We got and it. You, got one. you know, we don't play till Friday night. Butler's the same way. They don't. It's kind of odd because usually, you know, with the eleven team league, you only have one team. Is that's Butler all. off all the week. Yes, too? they're wow. off all week, just like so, us. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe one of the teams that is playing Duke or something. Yeah, they had a triple <laughs> yeah. Game. yeah. You know, they could have got the. We could have got the benefit of our triple over so. And they're playing well. They're playing yeah. really well, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, Tad Mata's Tad Mata's done an unbelievable job but with I kept transfers. That. I go, you got to look at. People just don't look at two games. Look at the entire schedule. Like Seton Hall, six and one. Oh, mm. uh, I go. Look, dudes, you got to look at their schedule. They haven't played any of the top teams on the road yet. 
They've got to go to everybody on the road, and they started today with Marquette. Yeah, but there's so the, the last two games they've been without Kadari. I understand. You know, and but that's you still have to go on the road to, to UConn, yeah. Creighton, St. John's, all those teams. You have to go on the road. Where we've already – we've gotten 60% of our top-tier road games out of the way. Now, not to, not to say that right. Providence and Xavier aren't tough road games. I'm Absolutely. not saying that. Yep. Butler. Yep. But, but at least we, we, we've – battled some of those tough teams on the road already and we had a nice stretch here of three home games in a row. I said we can make some hay here right. and move right back up in the stands. And the, the good thing about it is it's a pretty mature group that is taking it one game at a time. Probably wouldn't have thought that looking at the first half tonight but <laughs> uh, you know that happens. Uh, give a lot of credit to, to oh. DePaul. Mm -hmm. um, you know Matt Brady's done a phenomenal job in a short period of time and um, you know, they got them believing a little bit, and that, mm -hmm. that's half the battle is, is yeah, believing. They're absolutely. going to beat some people. I don't mm -hmm. know who and when, but, you know, they'll, they'll win some games. They can put two halves together. They yeah. can put another half together tonight like they did the right. first half. Right. I want to talk to you about this, and I, I, I hasten to even <laughs> ask you this, but I was sitting there at halftime going, all right, they're 20% from three. They've been just driving it to us to the ring. Right. Let's, let's, let's contain that a little bit. We're okay. To, I mean, was that kind of what we did? Was no, okay I think, I think to contain that? Like, even if they take a three, hey, great, let's contest it. But let's not let them get – because they were getting deep. And I thought in the second half they got to the 15-foot line versus the three-foot line. Yeah, I, I think Fisher was tremendous at the rim. And part of it was Ryan had two fouls. All right. So it, he was aggressive, but he wasn't overly aggressive. Uh, in his limited minutes after he picked up those two. I thought in the second half he was really a factor. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he necessarily blocked any shots, but he was more active. And, um, you know, he's a guy that, that probably can play with two fouls, and, and it's not going to affect him. But his aggressiveness certainly picked up in the second half. And as you said, uh, the other guys, I mean, I don't think people realize how much or how – improve Stephen Ashworth oh, is defensively. Look, I've been screaming yeah. his yeah. praises. People were down mm -hmm. at him, and I said, people, you need to relax. Yeah. To defensively, I mean, I, and I don't think I don't think he's ever been asked to play defense yes. like, like we've asked him to he do. I talked to him the other day, and he said, yeah, it's taken me some time because right. and, and that he goes, frankly, that's probably taken a, a little bit away from mm -hmm. the other parts of my game, although I think coming to this game, he was 33-6 and six and since right. the turnovers coming to this game yep. over the last six, but he, uh, yeah, and uh, what, what we no what I noticed tonight was, you know, you know when he shoots a free throw, that rotation is oh, just, it's beautiful. It's <laughs> just one yeah. thing. And I noticed tonight he, he shot a couple threes, and that it, it almost looked like a little bit of a knuckleball type thing. And then the next four were just perfect yeah. rotation, and those did nothing. But and that. he's a confident young man. Yes, and, he and is. He, and he's yes, a young man. He he's is. 24 years old. So, you know, there's a maturity there that – an 18 year old doesn't have and a confident level that an 18 I mean he's been on a mission he's he's experienced real life yeah. and he's experienced frustration and setbacks and he knows how to deal he's with it he's experienced getting the door slammed in his face yeah. many times yes I'm sure <laughs> absolutely uh, okay. you know and, and defensively we were just Jerry and I were just talking about that like early in the season you know, you're getting over the pick and you're, you're fighting, you're getting behind the guy, and then it was over. Yeah. There wasn't any fight. Now he's getting over, he's a little behind him. A, he's harassing the guy from behind. B, he's getting right. in front of the guy eventually and stopping him. Yep. And he's had several games where he had stops. I think the U early in the UConn game, too, he had some stops there where he, he forced the turnover. You know, earlier in the year, we were hiding them. We yeah, were, yeah, but, you know, yeah. trying to, you know, and that that's every team has that. And now, I mean, we're putting him on the other team's leading scorer and saying, just chase him. You know, get him off the three-point line, fight through those ball screens, get him, you know, into a mid-range game where, where Ryan can help you out a little bit. And he has been phenomenal uh, in that regard. So hats off to him for, for buying in. And as you said, eventually the shots are going to fall. He's too good of a shooter for them not to. And he goes five for nine tonight. Yep. And, you know, the other ones, you know, maybe he took one yeah, bad one. one. But, but when you're a shooter, when you're a shooter like that, um, you're allowed to take a bad one every once in a while after you've made some. And, and you want him to, to shoot it with confidence, and he certainly is. The other part of the game, too, is like he's starting to take, and there was one tonight I thought he could have done, he's starting to take that mid-range a little bit, too, which yeah. I think he can hit. Yeah, he can. Um, we're not designed for that. No. Mm -hmm. You know, we want layups and threes. but <laughs> well, Except that, for 23. <laughs> that, being said, that being said, you have to shoot it some. Yeah. And he can. Uh, he's proven that, you know, he can, but... Mm -hmm. 
as you mentioned, Trey is elite uh, in that regard. Um, so it's a good mix. Um, it's a good group of guys, as we've talked about every time we've been in here. Uh, they enjoy each other, and you know what? That's half the battle, too, is getting them to like each other and play with each other and share the ball. I thought it was kind of a blessing in disguise to get called two fouls because we got a little more time for Fred because Fred hasn't gotten a lot of time no. lately, and tonight he got a little more time. And yeah. I think, you know, he wasn't earth-shattering out there, but he's getting – Getting some more reps, and that's good. Yeah, it, it always is to get those guys more reps. And, and you know, to to defend us or Mac a little bit is, you know, when you're playing a, a one or two possession game, you can't afford to have Fred out there making the, the mistakes because the game could be decided in that short period of time. So Mac has done a really good job of, of um, not letting the game get away from us and, right. and getting called, you know, right back in there when he felt like it was. So... Uh, it's a little frustrating, obviously, uh, for those guys that aren't getting a lot of minutes, but they have to stay with it because you never know. You know, Paul picks up his third, you know, on a silly whatever, and then, you know, Fred's going to have to play big-time minutes. And Kind of escape that first half, have Paul yes. out there once in yep, a while. Yep, yep, and even to start the whole second half. I, I think he ended up with two fouls, didn't he? Yeah. The whole, didn't commit another foul, I don't yeah. think. Yeah, so, yeah, it's good. It's a good um, win. I know we would have liked to have been up 40, gotten the – like Josiah and Jason, a little more run, right? Yeah, you know, same same situation. You know, those guys need minutes in order to improve. You can work at your game all you want, but at this level, it's game reps that are going to help you get to that next level. And it's been hard. It's been really hard. I mean, you know, prior to this game, Baylor had played 95 of a possible 95 minutes, <laughs> and mm. it's incredible. And and you know, for him to continue to to play at the level that he is after those kind of minutes is pretty impressive in, yeah, in that absolutely. regard as well. Absolutely. Uh, are you going to give the team any extra days off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we'll take uh, tomorrow and Monday off, and then uh, we'll come back Tuesday and probably introduce Butler, uh, but maybe more stuff on us, you know, um, a mm. few things that, you know, we'd like to clean up because we don't have any breaks now until yeah. March. Yeah. You know, right. We're go, 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 go. But it's just always weird. Uh, I always think it's weird of the schedule. You go, and then it seems like in the last few years, <coughs> we play a Saturday game, and then we're off a whole week and play. Yeah. Like, like, it's like throw that somewhere in the middle of February or something, right. you know? Right, right. It's kind of funny. You know, we're talking about Baylor playing 95 minutes. He came out twice tonight, and both times I looked at him and said, what are you doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he, he looked at me and said, yeah, you're right. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> so. Uh, and then we're going to go on the road for two in a row. Are we, are we going to stay on the road yep. for those two? Yep. It's a Wednesday, I believe, in yeah, Providence. Providence. And then uh, I'm not sure. We'll probably spend the night in Providence. And then Thursday morning, head to Cincinnati. I'm not sure. Good exactly time to go there because they're all wore out after today. They got nothing left. <laughs> Who's that? Providence. Providence fans. Uh, yeah. 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 Boy, that they're, was. They're, they've, they've given everything they got. Yeah. Hopefully that's over now. You know. <laughs> yeah. For Ed. I don't think so. No, I think every time he comes back there, it's <laughs> yeah. going to be. But. Yeah. You know, it's a good game. They they hung in there. A, I, a well I thought played. it would be a good game. Yeah. I, I really thought. Going in, I said, you know, I think he's going to chance to steal yeah. right here because. No, oh, that would have that would have made his day. Oh, sure. oh I'm sure. baby! And then, and then look at uh, Villanova's up 17 to three oh, and loses totally. a double overtime. They I had several leads. When they I, blew it. I yeah. left home, it was 40 to 28 <coughs> or something. I yeah. got here and I go, what do you mean they're in overtime? Yeah. I mean, I couldn't yeah. believe it. And then they, they somehow got to a triple. It's been crazy, triple overtime today. And then there was a we had a triple and then. Uh, TCU had a triple today. With Is Baylor. that right? Well, and Baylor was way up on them. They were up ten in the second half. We, we, you know, in our before we start working on opponents and stuff, we talk about it. It's a crazy year in college basketball. Yeah. Mm. I mean, a lot of parity. Who who is number one? Who who is There's going to no make it to the team. final four? Who who's going to get hot at the right time? Um, it is just probably yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Thirty, t right 30, now 30 now teams. Not easy. Trust yeah. me. I yeah. get hammered every week, and I'm like, look, people. The last seven seed and the first <laughs> 11 seed are pretty much the same yeah. team. Mix them up, throw them in a hat, right. put them in the order you want, yeah, but yeah. that's how it is. Avoid injury, stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy. The Kansas lost today. I think that's their second loss in second a row. Second loss in a row. Who, you know, how often does that happen to Kansas? Right, you know? right. right. It's a you know? crazy year. No, you go to Iowa State. One at a time. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The other thing I noticed from a bracketology standpoint is of the upper tier teams, including, like, you don't see a lot of teams – a lot of games played in the Q2 of yeah, like the at this point. Which is weird. Like yeah. it's ne I've never seen that before. Like right. 
Right. Usually you'll see four to five to six. You're seeing teams with one or two, and that's it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely crazy. And it, it's it's and you know you, because I think part of it is the Big Twelve because a bunch of teams in that conference didn't play very strong non-conference. Right. Right. So their net is not very good. So they're way down. Mm -hmm. You know, so on and so forth. It's How about the Mountain West too? I mean, it, it's a lot of good. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Like you look at scores. Air Force. John Just Higgins was out there. <laughs> Evaluating officials sure. a month ago, and somehow we were just talking scheduling. And he said, "Schedule Air Force, they're terrible." Mm -hmm. well, they turn around they and they beat UNLV, UNLV I mean, at yeah. UNLV by 20, 40, 20, yeah. 30, 40 yeah, points. Yeah. Like it's just one of those years. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. La my last bracket, I had three Mountain West teams on the five line. Yeah. I mean, who would thunk that, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, and, and then, it's probably not going to end up like that. And then you right. Colorado State's okay. They're going to get right today. No, they go to Wyoming and get beat today. They did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So they've lost <laughs> what three out of four now. I think they're they're under 500 in the league, aren't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. oh yeah. And Utah State, BYU, and Boise play a, a classic game. Goes double overtime, and Utah, Utah State, State won at Boise. Yeah. Boise. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So now they've got control of that league, really. Yeah. But you've still got New Mexico. Yeah, they've got five, six really good teams in that league, and I think people are underselling them a little bit because when you watch them play, that's they're a really fun league. Good. They're really good. They're they're very uh, skilled. Is yes. that a good way to? I mean, I've, I've watched them I mean, a New lot. Mexico's got some skilled players. Yes, all the two young freshman guards are tremendous. And, and Nevada has one superstar, like, and and you know Utah State's just Utah State. They look just like the Nationals, yeah. there, you know. Yeah. And it's a crazy. Yeah, you're right. It's just a crazy, crazy. And then, you know. You got a Nebraska team that's rolling. They go to the Maryland, get beat by yeah. twenty, and they're yeah. up twelve to two or something, yeah. <laughs> right? It's just like, yeah. yeah, you just don't know. And it, uh, the other game right before us was Iowa. I, I mean, I think Iowa is way better than their Michigan playing. struggle, though, man. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I've seen Iowa. Who play won that game? I don't Iowa. Iowa, won. Iowa at Michigan. Yeah. But I mean, I just when I see Iowa, I'm like, I think they got some pieces that could really get some things done, like when they played against us. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just it's just a weird. Weird Any game. night. I mean, that's, that's a, you know, you play DePaul, and we're, they're up three at the half. Yeah. One you know? turnover, DePaul. One turnover. Yes. One turnover. That's great. <laughs> yes. yeah. that's hey, great. Yeah, the, key, the key for us, and it's kind of been that way for a while now, is getting stops and then getting out in transition. Yeah. You know, that's that's where we are at our best right. because we can spread the floor and, and uh, you know, we get Ryan <laughs> some looks, and um, we were able to do that to right. start the second frankly, half. Frankly, we really haven't had a lot of that this no. year. No, no. Because teams – Teams, let's face it, they're throwing up shots and they're sending five guys back. Mm. They Either that they're or they're sending four to the glass. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's, <laughs> like there's, UConn. There's yeah, no in right. between. <laughs> you're you right, know? You're right, you're and, right. and teams that do that, you know, in the past, they've been a little bit afraid of our, our transition game. And this year it's, you know, everybody's into the analytics now and it says sure, doesn't matter. Send yeah. people to the glass instead of sending them back. Mm -hmm. So that's hurt us uh, yeah. a couple times. Yeah. Uh, but with that being said, we need to do a better job of, pushing on made field goals to make them pay for right. sending that many guys yeah. to the glass. I want to so. go back to you kind of second. So when they're going hedging so do hard. Do we have to go back to that game? No, I don't do we'll Just that. for a minute. Because <laughs> right. Jerry and I actually did the post game. Yeah, it was we not. were talking about this. So yeah. I want to ask yep. an astute basketball mind like yourself, when they're hedging so much like that, yep. do we ever like go to like a, like a here's what I'm back in my you know, <laughs> old day when we played with the Peach Basket. Yep. We played a 1-4 and like just – back cut the guy because they are so and we uh, granted we had some back cuts in that game yeah we either missed the pass or didn't see the guy and we had some a lot of open looks too yeah. and, and they did yeah. too you know yeah. neither team shot it well that no. night no. Uh, that's what I, we said we said it we said you know it 35 sounds crazy. Yeah. it sounds crazy but that was the night you kind of could have been had yeah. you know yeah. what i mean yeah our our defensive scheme was Played to perfection. Yeah, yes. it was the second. Was it was a second chance right. opportunity that killed us. Right, that, that hurt us. And you know, they're they're obviously number one in the country for a reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, people were jumping on. Me and up. they were excited. They, oh, I mean, they, they, that crowd was pumped. They, they were. They were. They, they were. Number, they got ranked number one yeah. that weekend. Yeah. You know, I think they were all talking. over Call It yeah, was his birthday, were, and they hate Creighton. Yeah. I mean, they were ready to. We had a huge contingent of UConn fans watching our show, and they were chatting in, and they were like, "Well." But Newton gets four offensive rebounds a game. I go, that's great. But when you just let him walk all the way in <laughs> yeah. and get the rebound and you don't put a body on him, yeah. I could get an offensive rebound. Okay? Yeah. So, but so, that, and then yeah. to, to, to who, that's who we are. We're, we're not a great physical no. you know, defensive rebounding team. We, we, 
in the past we've been really good and part of the reasons we're really good is because teams were afraid of our transition mm -hmm. game yes. so they didn't send yes. as many guys this year they're they're into the analytics and they're saying screw it we're going to the crash glass. the boards wow. yeah yeah, so. UConn's good. I mean, they're, what they're ranked number one, like I said, their only loss was what at KU. Or no, they lost to Seton Hall, too. Yeah, they, they got lost drilled by Seton Hall. Seton Hall, yeah. yeah. A puzzle, but and that shows you how, I mean, that was a good win for us to go into Seton Hall, obviously, and win in three overtimes. Yeah, That's that was sn sneaking one away. Well needed, for yep. sure. I mean, yep. you, you come out of there with that win, and you feel good about it, and you mm -hmm. just kind of feel the momentum, mm -hmm. you know. Let me ask you, we should have won larger. that game three or four times. We should have won it three times, and we should have lost yeah. it twice. We're, we're yeah. down five in the third overtime. Did you sit there and go, of course. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we should have won it three times, and we did, one of the three, and we should have lost it twice. It was mm -hmm. wild. It's crazy. You mm -hmm. mean when Steven got tackled at center court, and that would have been the game <laughs> with did, two seconds left? Did Seton Hall think throws? they were down? I thought Seton Hall players thought they were still down when the way they were trying, almost uh, trying to foul yeah, Ashford. Yeah, that was crazy. And, and the official went like this, which means foul. Yeah. And then he this, yeah. opened his fist up. I don't see how Mac didn't get a T in that game. No, that, the reason Mac didn't get a T is they knew, knew they, they were bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's the only justification I that I can come up with. Unlike, right. unlike uh, right. Tuesday night when the ref went like this, and then there was a screw up with the substitution. Only reason he didn't get a second T was there was a screw up with the substitution, or they thought there Who, was. Miller? Yeah, oh. they thought there was, and then it was like, oh. Mac goes, well, wait a minute, the guy, that's the fifth foul. He's got to <laughs> come out of the game. And then, oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But I, I think... Sean Miller probably regrets that T because that kind of yeah, it's just swung shifted the, the momentum. momentum. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and like like we were talking, when you get it like tonight, you get a T. There, it's two points. It's yeah. not it's not maybe two points. Yeah. It's two points. Yeah, in most cases for sure. With Ashworth, it, yeah. It yeah. Oh, for us it is absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it as always, guys. Yep. Always good to see you, Coach. Well, Pleasure. Hey, hey, Pleasure. Before you go though, yep. one second. Yep. I, I took a picture for the game. I just never get sick of it. I never get sick of standing up yeah. with the with the I mean, it's just a incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Unbelievable. unbelievable. The, it, you know, Max started this fourteen years ago and it was a nice event. Um, in what two what was that? What would it have been? Two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, I mm -hmm. think. And what it's grown to now is just phenomenal and, and certainly a credit to, to Mac and that whole committee that, that works together to put this thing together. Just incredible, right. phenomenal. And I mean, to get 18, and it was yeah, 10th no, largest crowd in, in, in yeah. school history. Right, for DePaul. Everybody's right, for DePaul. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you got DePaul yeah, coming exactly. in. It's like selling out against Evansville or it's something like, like that back in the like, Mac days. It's like right. homecoming in football. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, but yeah. yeah. And that, they make beer cans with the yeah. pink on it. It's I mean, just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's grown to national recognition oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. I mean, no doubt yeah i no kind of disappointed that it wasn't on big fox and i'm sure the reason is because it was to paul yeah. right. it would have been xavier or you know marquette, marquette or yeah it, it would have been but you kind of no. get it but yeah. fs1 still they, they do a good job so yeah it was great yeah absolutely thank all right thanks appreciate coach, it guys yeah. thank you appreciate thank you. it Murph stopped by the desk there. All right, thank you. That's uh, assistant coach Steve Murfeld, and it's sponsored by CareMinders Home Healthcare. Uh, you know, I talk to Jim over there at CareMinders all the time, and he's a big Jays fan, and he said, you know, people don't reach out to us until they need our services. But that's why you should call first to ask CareMinders what they can do for you when the time comes. And better yet, to go to their website, careminersnebraska.com, and check out all that they can have offer and uh, they will they will tell you everything that you need to know and everything that they give to help you with your uh, loved one who needs personal care so check them out today 402-532-1383 and we're going to segue right into player profile Josiah Dotzer how you doing buddy I'm good how are you guys how was how was going down Meeting the family who had your shirt. I mean, that's got to be an unbelievable moment. No, yeah, it was so special. Um, obviously, I've been around Omaha, and I've seen a lot of pink out games, sure. and, and they're always so special. Uh, but the end of the game was something new that I had never experienced, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to more of those because it was just a, a really cool moment between a family um, and, you know, their, me being able to support them. So, yeah, yeah it was absolutely. great. You were probably looking forward to more minutes today. <laughs> I did mean, you, did you tell the first team like, could you have rolled this out to like a 15 <laughs> point lead the first half and then out to 30 so I could have got in at the 12 minute mark? No. <laughs> no, yeah, the team played well. Um, second half was really good to watch, but yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, 
when you get when you've had you know limited obviously these games have been you know Baylor's played 55 minutes mm-hmm. of the game and stuff. When you get in there and have limited minutes, you feel like a little extra. Like, for instance, if you were in every game for three or four minutes, it'd be different. But okay, this is my time. Do you, do you feel like a little extra pressure, maybe? Like, to, okay, I got to get something done here. Um, more or less. I think that when you're coming in, you know, at the end, uh, trying to get a feel for live play, um, you know, for experience and just trying to get a feel. Uh, it's definitely. I wouldn't say pressure, but you definitely are trying to do things to where... Sense of urgency. Yeah, have a sense of urgency. That's a good way of putting it. Um, But, yeah, uh, you try to get out there and play with freedom, you know, play loose. But it's hard sitting, you know, a lot of minutes and then coming in right at the end. So Because you and Jason are kind of in the same boat. So you're both out there trying to, you know, hey, let's do this. Jason gets a corner shot. He got wide open, you know. Man, I should have made that one. Yeah, you know, yeah. Make it practice all the time. Right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. Practice is different from games. So, oh, yeah. so tell us about practices. I'm at, I'm at a lot of them. I see you practicing. You're, there, there's days where I'm like, jeez, I can see what the kid was, player of the year, <laughs> taking it at the hole and so forth. What, what, tell us, tell the fans about a little bit about like the practice week for you and what you have to do. Do you get involved? First of all, do you get involved in any of the scouting? Oh, yeah, everyone, yeah. 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 Um, I definitely, because of my position and role on the team, I help out with scout and I get um, good play with the, the yeah. starters too. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of both helps me kind of see both perspectives too, and it also helps me learn game plans um, for the, the opponents, and I feel like that's helped me grow mentally too. Well, I would think so. I, uh, I was telling somebody tonight, I go, you don't realize that these guys, you know, you and Jason and, and the Watkins, like, how much they have to learn in a short it's not like you got two weeks to learn this you got like two three yeah. days you got to pick this up right now yeah for like, sure and there's so many different you got villanova versus marquette mm-hmm. versus you i mean different offenses different defenses yeah it's got to be challenging yeah it's it's it took a few you know games to get the feel for it but i feel like our guys have gotten a really good rhythm and we have a great coaching staff to help us teach um, you know, the new plays and the new uh, systems every single uh, few days. So it's been good. Yeah. So next week, do you get to be Posh Alexander? <laughs> I don't know exactly. <laughs> he gets who to shoot down. a lot. You gotta <laughs> run You're going to have to put on a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Got to no, wear yeah. the long sleeve. And, and, right. and shrink some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't uh, know. You don't they don't know. tell us who the scout's going to be um, okay. until the day of. We don't have anybody but. that would mimic Posh, really. No, he's kind of a short, stocky guy, right? I wonder, I wonder who did it, like, two years ago when uh, he was at St. John's. Like, you know. <laughs> I know. I guess, I don't know. Like, I knew a guy that was a backup, and he said, I always like to get guys who shot a lot. So yeah. I could always yeah. tell Coach, like, I get, this guy shoots 20 yeah, shots a game. probably like being Kolick, right? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, always that's a fun right. scout. Yeah. That's yeah. always a fun yeah. scout. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, he controls their offense really well, and it's right. fun to, to So you mimic got that him. coming up. That's right. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And he's left-handed, so. Um, yeah. So we asked, we asked Baylor, Baylor about this. Baylor hates it. So I'm going to ask you because you've got, uh, obviously, you've got a road game now. You're going to get off your feet for a couple days. That's mm-hmm. going to be nice. Yeah. You guys have been going hard. And then Butler at home, we don't want to look past that. But then you've got a two-game road trip. Do you, so far as a freshman, do you like going on the road? Uh, I'd say no. Um, especially so just like Baylor. Especially being from, like, Omaha. Uh, it, it's yeah. kind of hard, like, staying on the road for that long. Uh, but, you know, it was a great – it's been great experiences. Uh, the guys are really good to hang out with. And you got to go to the – African American Museum. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They they give us some activities to do, uh, yeah. so they keep us busy, um, which is nice. Because that was a long road trip. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That was the last one where you went to uh, UConn and then Seton Hall. That yep. Was a long road trip. Yeah, that was the longest one we've had. So yeah. that was that was good though, because the guys we all mm-hmm. find things to do and, and keep ourselves entertained, so it's fun. Mm-hmm. We ask every player that comes in here because he's bragging about it. Right. And you can rib Josh because he had to go road trips to Terre Haute, Indiana, and Carbondale, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're going to D.C. and Good New point. York City. Good point. I mean, Good point. Yeah. I, mean I remember the time uh, Travis Justice, who would do the games back then, it was just like, look at this plane we flew back because <laughs> our plane couldn't make because there was a snowstorm. And, like, you guys flying those planes out of time now. Uh, but anyway, 
Ashworth is bragging about his card tricks. Have you have you seen them? Have you? No, yeah, actually, this last road uh, road trip that we were on, we got stuck in the airport. Oh, and I heard that. The, mm. There's a on the bathroom in the airplane. Oh my something? goodness, it was like we were in there for like four hours just doing yeah. anything, just hanging. Mm. And he started playing cards with everybody and was teaching everybody, so that was fun. So yeah. did, did you get fooled by his tricks? Did you figure him out? I did not figure him out, no. Really? Because so, he said the, the guy liked to do it on his Fred. Fred Fred's <laughs> baffled. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so what, from, say, September through now, what do you think you've improved most in your game? Um, I definitely say uh, defensively, um, I've improved a lot, and there's still a lot more to go. But that's been a big ef- emphasis uh, from Coach McDermott um, on my development is um, on ball and off ball defense. And me being able to learn from you know the players in front of me, like Steven and Trey, has helped me a, uh, a ton. And then also just learning how to um, pick out things from film uh, has been a great help. So yeah, who do you think uh, is the funniest guy? In the Funniest guy, I'd have to say either Shane or Brock. Re- well, I would say Brock. I would get – yeah, I'm with you on Brock. Yeah. No, yeah, Shane. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people probably would not guess Shane. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Just spend a day with him or get him out of his <laughs> shell a little bit. <laughs> He's one of the funniest dudes Brock on the team. Brock is very dry with his humor. I like it. I like it because I am too. Uh, who has the strangest eating habits of anybody on the team? Strangest eating habits? Like, like something they like that you're just like, what in the world? Mm, that's a hard one. I don't know. But you guys kind of eat the same thing. Yeah, we, we always eat the same thing. And we, we who we eats the most? And it's certain, it's Isaac not, Trout. It's not Mason. <laughs> yeah, obviously. I can see that. No, <laughs> no. no yeah, we he actually get ice. on Mason. He's got to eat more. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. And every, every time we talk to Mason, Mason, you got to eat more. No, yeah. Uh, Isaac can Isaac. eat a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he can eat well, a lot. Well, he looks like he's... He's bulked up, yeah. 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 No, yeah. And he looks like he's 25 and he's <laughs> a freshman. Right? Oh, shoot, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, what are you looking forward to in the second half now? You, you guys have climbed, like we mentioned earlier, you've climbed from fifth place to second place in about a week and a half. No, yeah, we've been playing really well as a team, practicing well, and I'm really excited to get to the... Uh, to the New York tournament. I mean, I've uh, I've never yeah, been down there, there for that, go. and oh, and that's just going to be a great time. That so is, that is going to be nuts. Yep. Y- you know what? The one year I went. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> oh, that is devastating. I, I was, uh, <laughs> actually, so at least I was media. So at least I got was one of the 200 people to watch the first half of us in St. John. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Mm. I mean, two people did stories on me. They're like, "You're yeah. kidding me? This is your first one, and this happened, you know?" And it was like. That day, I remember very vividly because um, Creighton had to stop at halftime, yeah. and we were playing state basketball. Yes. Right. They let you go ahead and play. They Thank let goodness. us play. Right. Yeah, our, our coach came in at halftime, and he told us, you know, don't take anything for granted because they just shut Creighton down at halftime, and we mm-hmm. could be done at any moment. That was that was a good – I was glad the kids got to play that, yeah. you know, yeah. at half t- it, and didn't have to get – I couldn't imagine being a senior and getting to the state tournament and not getting a chance to compete for a championship, yeah. you know. So I I'm just, glad they I let just you do that. Getting home and then like, <coughs> oh, and the world no, changed. There's no tournament next yeah. year. Yeah, <laughs> nothing to look forward oh, to. Oh, I know. Yeah, it was, it was like, crazy. What am I gonna do now? <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. talk to my wife for crying out loud. <laughs> oh <was> shoot. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's Madison Square Garden. I've b- I've watched a lot of basketball in a lot of arenas, and I went to Madison Square last year, and it was it was it was cool. Yeah, so you're going to get to go there, though, because you're going to play St. John's there. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's going to be cool. That'll be the first. Yeah. 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 A lot yeah. of history in that yeah. building. Yeah. yeah. Larry Bird. It, you know, that. it's not that seating-wise. It's not that much bigger than our arena. I just but love the But when you yeah, walk in there, you're yeah. just like, wow. wow, this place is huge. It's nice. If you get a chance, I'm going to go around the concourse. They have pictures of every event that's ever been in Madison Square Garden. It's wow. amazing. Yep. They've got boxing gloves of Muhammad Ali. They've got mm-hmm. pictures of the Beatles played there. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Yep. It's just, it's just the, now, you, they may stick you way up high. I know we were there last year. We were at the playoff ga- in the playing games, and I remember seeing Ryan and Frederick and those guys sitting way up high, oh, like really? in those rafters. Like, you can't get oh, better seats. Oh, where, where, where they had to watch when they weren't playing. Right, they yeah. weren't playing right oh, on wow. Wednesday. The hockey press so, box, hopefully yeah. you guys won't be playing the playing games. You get on Wednesday, you can get up and get set high. So, <laughs> and maybe they do that till they get 
away from a bunch of you know the well, people. Well, I think I think there's a lot of room in those hockey there is, spots yeah, areas up, up there, high. so they're like, yeah, we'll put the players up here. They'll be out of the way. They'll keep yeah. But UConn fans are very loud, as you experienced last yeah. week. They are loud. I mean, that whole place was loud. That that uh, UConn Marquette game last year was wow. I mean, Marquette so, beat them. So you've them. been to UConn Marquette. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, what do you think? Just by gauging fans and everything, what's the toughest place to play so far? So far, uh, the toughest two places we've played was our back-to-back. -back. UConn was probably number one. Their fans were just crazy, yeah, they and were they, they were heckling at us the whole game. <laughs> and then right after that, I'd say Seton Hall's really? fans were mm -hmm. just – they they are just – you know, they got that jersey. jersey. Oh, yeah. yeah, that jersey rudeness yeah. that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they're kind of known for if you can catch them, like, on a midweek game, the kind of crowds, not yeah. many people there, and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. I wouldn't say the crowd was huge that game, but it was just – their fans oh, yeah. were, I mean, it, it felt like a big crowd because yeah. well, their I mean, fans. it was a big game for them because they were, I think, 6-1 and one at the time. Yeah. So they were right there at first place. So yeah. It was a big game and playing Creighton, you know. Yeah. yeah it's absolutely. huge. Buddy, thanks, man. Enjoy no. it, man. Yeah, good luck the rest thanks of the year. Yeah. Thank you guys for having are. me. Yep. And uh, we're going to go to Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Great sponsor of our show. As years have gone by and times have changed, Equitable Bank has evolved with technology by providing new and improved services to customers while offering superior customer service. And they do their their customer services off the charts. An example of this is their new lobby in the Pierce Street location in Elkhorn. It is an upscale cafe look. You're going to love it. And, man, you walk in the door and they just jump up and want to know what how they can help you in, in helping your banking experience. So check them out today. Like we said, they got a... Uh, Location at Pierce Street in Elkhorn and also just right north of the Schwab headquarters. That's Equitable Bank. The Bank of Blue Banner, uh, they take banking personally, and they do answer the phone on the first ring. Two good guests there, Jer. Yeah, Josiah, great. what a great kid, man. You know, he's going to be really good at Creighton. It's just, you know, that freshman year, you're learning a lot. And he's got experienced guys like Steven and Trey and those guys to learn from. We so. love legacies. Oh, yeah. Here at Creighton. That's right. Him. We love them. We love them. Uh, speaking of legacies tonight, so down here earlier tonight, um, I'm, I'm walking. We, we've got a table down here before the game, and I'm walking around, and, and I, I see Tyler come in. I say, hey, Tyler, hey, yeah. how's it going? And a guy over the car goes, hey, what's up, man? I haven't seen you forever. And I'm like, God, the guy looks familiar, and I go and sit down. And then I look across next to Tyler was Zach Hans. I go, that's Zach, Zach Hanson from Hanson's South dad. Dakota. Oh, his dad. Yeah, oh, okay. That said hi to me. I was like, God, he looks so familiar. Uh -huh. I hadn't seen him for three or four years. Mm -hmm. We used to hang out a lot after games um, with him and his wife. And, and uh, then we, we had a great time. Uh, his wife, he mentioned, she goes, and we had a great time in Sacramento after oh, yeah. um, a whole bunch of rep team hotel. It was, it was yep. they were the best, man. They're, they're great. And it was so great to see him. So mm -hmm. I saw Tyler. Zach Hansen and then saw uh, Taylor Stormberg within like oh, wow. minutes of each other. So yep. it's great to see a bunch of uh, ex players back yep. here. And our own Ross Ferrini, who usually does his show, did uh, play by play tonight. Oh, okay, cool. I Good asked Ross, I said, seriously, on press row, and you wore a cap? Just a pet peeve of an old guy like mm -hmm. that. Because y you go to games, how often do you see a guy on press row with a cap on? Never. Yeah, never. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. No. I'm like Ross, he goes, eh, it's bad hair day. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> we all do. But uh, anyway, uh, it, it was just fun seeing these guys, man. Oh yeah. It's so, it's so great. They're, they're just such, they're, uh, have, you, have you ever met a bad, like these guys are all just great people. And they've they gone are. on to have great successes in life. Right. And I think that's what's so strong about our program. Yep, it is. We we graduate good kids. I mean, they've come back and follow the program like Jahan's. I mean, some of them have careers over in Europe, but they always have that Creighton tie. So, all right, we got unsung hero. It's sponsored by Godfather's Pizza. Pizza pie piled high. Uh, you know, we got a big day of uh, NFL football tomorrow. A great time to order some Godfather's Pizza if you don't want to get out, but you should because the weather I think is going to be nice. Pretty nice. So Godfather's Pizza, um, they've got everything for you. They've got pizza, wings, cheese sticks, desserts, and more. Uh, order online at godfathers.com or stop by your nearest location. They have a feast to feed your whole family. It's pizza you can't refuse. It's Godfather's Pizza loaded with fresh mozzarella and abundantly top toppings. So check them out today at godfathers.com. 
Well, let's go first with Unsung Hero. Who do you got? Boy, you know, you had the big four have great games after that. I, it's hard. Mason didn't have a good game, um, didn't play a lot of minutes. I got it. I got it. Well, we can, we can pull part of a player's game out, too. Okay. I mean, Fran got let minutes. Me, let me okay. here. Go ahead. Northwestern is up 81 to 49. Oh, my How gosh. How far has this Ohio State program Wow. Been? Like, they have beaten nobody this year. I They're going to drop to 3-6 and six in the Big Ten, 13-7 overall. Not a horrible record, but they've beaten, beaten nobody. nobody. Mm -mm. Wow. Yep. Um, sorry, I digress. No. Wow. Anyway, um, you know, I, I when he gets on the floor because he hasn't gotten any minutes lately, I, I spend a lot of time watching him, and that's Isaac Trout. Mm -hmm. And I think he was pretty solid tonight. He got beaten time in defense, but the rest of the time yep. he was solid. He came down with a really strong rebound. This is in the first half when mm -hmm. the game was kind of like <laughs> a one-point game. Right. Hits a big three, comes out, he, he shoots that ball so confidently. That's what mm -hmm. I love about it. Yeah, he does. He's, he's not hesitant at all, and, and I really like Isaac. So, so uh, let's let's make him unsung hero, because it was a tough <coughs> night to pick him. Yeah, and you know, you still got to remember Isaac is still a freshman. I, he I doesn't say. look like it on I the court, it. but he is still a freshman. It. Crazy. He's going to really improve. So, where's the call the game? You got one? I really don't remember one. Really, that was bad. Of course, I was sitting up high. I didn't have the great views, but I can't remember a call that was really bad that sticks out. I can't either, which yeah. is weird because the last two games we've had about eight of them. Hmm. You know, yeah. the UConn game, the Seton Hall game. Oh, Seton Hall Xavier game, you could pick 25. Last three games. Yeah. We've had tons of bad calls. I thought it was fairly well officiated. They didn't let it get out of hand. I mean, it was yeah. – uh, um, I can't I can't come up with a bad call. Yeah, so. yeah no, I can't either. Hmm. can't either. Give the refs an A. Yeah. Yeah, give worst call of the game uh, if you weren't at the game tonight because it was a – I, I don't know if it was official. They said top ten crowds. I don't know where that ranked, but mm -hmm. it obviously it was in the top ten. Yeah. For the Blue Jay Banner, we have a thing called Call Your Shot, and I think our old producer, Zach, called the shot. He said, we will have a top ten attendance game this year. And I thought, um, ooh, I wasn't sure because some of those crowds were good. They didn't hit. Well, yeah. they nailed it. Well, nailed it was a pink it. out game. It was a Saturday night game. We just don't – I wish we got more Saturday night games. And these 6 o'clock games are wheelhouse, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. people don't like the 8 o'clock. Right. Even on a Saturday, they like the 6 o'clock. They can come downtown at 3. Right. Have a few drinks, have something to eat right here at Let It Fly. Mm -hmm. Let It Fly was packed. Yeah, weather was, weather was pretty good. Weather was good. And those 6 o'clock – I remember I remember back in the Valley days, uh, we played Wichita one time. Remember when Anthony Talbert hit that little – Eight oh foot yeah. jumper to win the game. Yeah, that was like a four o'clock game oh or yeah. something, and the place was just <coughs> you couldn't stuff another person mm -hmm. in there. That had to be one of the top ten. Bring up Wichita, program. man. Has that program hit the bottom? Oh, they are bad. I Remember they imagine. say we couldn't compete in the Big East, and yeah. I just look back and laugh <laughs> now. And I can't imagine what ha what what it's like down there. Oh, it's got to be horrible. I mean, you live in Wichita, and your fans. team sucks now. I mean, what do you? Yeah, it's it can't I mean, be good. I wonder how many fans they get. I don't know. I mean, what else are you going to do in Wichita? But, I mean, that's hard to go watch a team like that. You I know, think they're in the bottom of their conference. The old, the old uh, Paul Solentrop, who used to be the beat writer and then went to actually work, like, kind of for the university mm -hmm. in in charting their first year in the AAC. Mm -hmm. I, I, think of, I think of that guy because he was such a super guy and such a great job. And I think now he's just got to be like, Oh yeah, this is this can't be much. Yeah, they're bad. Remember the old days when we were in the Valley and oh, yeah. we were making the Final Four? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, they were good. They, Marshall was a good coach, but, you know, bad Stuff person. Stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bad person. Yeah, Yeah, crazy. Uh, let's go to opponent preview sponsored by Equitable Bank as well. Uh, Butler. So I had this 13-8. I was chalking up a, a loss for them. They so won. They're 14-7 and seven now. Yeah. They're 5-5 five and five in the league. That's going to shoot them up the standings. They're going to be, they're going to be on that borderline of uh, hitting, uh, playing, you know, getting out of Wednesday night. I, that, 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 that's a big reach mm -hmm. because it seems to me they played quite a few games at home. Right? Yeah, but uh, they're going to come here. Uh, they haven't been all that great on the road. Mm -hmm. I still don't. They're not a team. Look, I don't fear Seton Hall, but I fear Butler less than Seton. 
Yeah. I don't know how they're going to match up with Cockbrenner down low. They no, don't have that, a lot of size down low. That's their big problem. You know, obviously you got a guy like Posh Alexander. If yeah, he gets yeah, hot, has a career been, game, but yeah, he can be he can play good and bad. He, so he hasn't been the St. John's Posh Alexander when Who's I watched. He's that Davis kid. He had he had a good second yes, half. Yes, yes, He can score. They got a couple pieces. He's up an electric. They got a couple so. pieces. They're much better than last year. Oh, without, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's not a game we can't sleep on, and you kind right. of worry about that six-day layoff. However. They have a 16 layoff. Right. So and I, and that helps out. A Coach Murr said we need it. We need some time yes. just to sit back and relax, maybe work on ourselves a little bit, yes. get regenerized for. Because you don't get a chance to work on yourself during No, the not very often. Our next break becomes, I think, Marquette, our last home game, and then we get six or seven days off, I think, before we go to Nova. So this is a time we can kind of yep. catch our breath. I don't think it's a long enough break where we'll be sluggish or get rusty on it. It comes at a good time of the year, I think, too. So. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we can't we can't come out there and just roll roll it out and expect to win. But Obviously, that game, Butler's that game should be highly attended as well because it's a Friday night game and it's eight, eight o'clock. Right. So you got time to come down here after work, have dinner, have a few drinks, yep. and go to the game. Go and get fired up for the Butler team. It's so Friday night, man. We don't get many of those, and um, I think the weather's going to be decent too. Yeah. So. Speaking of which, I won't be here. Yeah. I'll be. Your weather's going to be better. Yeah, my weather's going to be slightly better, <laughs> uh, but uh, somebody will be. Josh, hopefully Josh and Ross will be here and taking care of the show. And uh, so join us after the Butler game. I um, want to mention one other thing. Uh, Blue Jay Banner, we will have an episode of Blue Jay Banner on Monday. Uh, Ross Charmin and I will be here, and we will, uh, we're will we efforting some people, hopefully maybe efforting uh, coach service. Oh, baseball wow. Baseball starting. What's that? With baseball starting. Yeah, I saw they got their first practice this yep. week. Yep. So, yeah, that's around the corner. So they yep. start – I think they start in about three weeks. They. Yep. Fly to Baltimore to play Coppin State. So yeah, there you go. A lot of. Um, it's not exactly a nice weather place. No, I know. You know. We would never go play someplace nice. You know, we couldn't <laughs> play 70 degree. We couldn't go to Hawaii. You got to. Yeah. Coach let's, Service likes the cold eight, weather. Let's I think. Have eight home games in a row here in the early March. Yeah, that always works out well. <laughs> um, you know, they got a lot of position players back the baseball team. I'm a little bit concerned about their pitching depth. They got a lot of new kids coming in for pitching. Let's just How that score. All, how the well, yeah, that's hard to do in March when it's 32 degrees outside. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit, we'll have to see how their pitching depth lines out. So, hey, want to get to the chat? We didn't have many tonight, but we had our, our friend uh, Doug Nagar from Echo Bank just uh, he just had his hip replaced. And wow, what a trooper! He walks in here tonight. I was well, like, good wow. for Doug. I was like, I was like, Doug, like, <clears throat> tell me you weren't coming tonight, and he came in. I uh, said, just got home, glad I made it out, almost as tired as the players. <laughs> he goes, Ashworth is coming. He is. he is, man. He's coming on. He's man. playing with confidence. Um, aggressive on defense. You like to – that's the one thing I've seen. He's not afraid. He's not backing off. Like Murph said, they're not trying to hide him anymore. Yeah. He's out there causing issues. I'd love to see put put together the assist turnover game with the shooting game, and mm -hmm. we will have it. Yep. All right, well, thanks so much for your, on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Appreciate it. Enjoy your Saturday night. Enjoy tomorrow. We'll see you back here in a week. Enjoy the week off. Enjoy the Big East chaos on Tuesday and Wednesday night. That's right. That's, that's back always and watch. fun to yep. sit back and watch. Thank you so much. We'll see you then. Thanks.